Well, hi everybody, and um, well, welcome to my next video. And firstly, let me just uh, apologize because um, I haven't done a video for like four months or something. So uh, I've been very, very naughty in that respect. Um, it's just been a bit busy in work and some other things, and I just haven't got round to it. But today I thought I would try and rectify that by doing a couple of videos on this return trip. I'm in Manchester right now, uh, and I'm going to be traveling home. Uh, and I thought I'd do a few videos on the way home, just one for the journey, so you can see what it's like to do a nearly 200 mile trip in a, in a Tesla. We'll have to stop and charge, so I'll take you through that process. And while we're doing that, I'll also speak about um, some of the things I love about this car. It's now been two years since I've had this car, just about, about a month away from that. Um, and so I thought I'd speak about the things I like about the car and the things that I wish I could change. That being said, there isn't an awful lot that I would change, but um, there's a couple of things, not, not very many. Um, so I thought the first thing I'd do is just have a little look through the new user interface, because um, that's changed quite a bit. There was a recent update just before Christmas. It's now uh, coming towards the end of January. And there's been a lot of reports about whether it's a great update or not. Uh, I really like it. I've got to say, all right, there's some things now you've got to press two buttons for instead of one. But equally, there are some things now that you can access with one button instead of two button pushes. So, you know, and it's a first world issue, let's face it, you know, do you press the screen once or twice? Um, I like it, it's a bit more colorful. I, like, I much prefer the font. Um, and anyway, we'll have a little look at it. The screen is not perfectly clean, but I'm gonna try and shoot this on the, uh, on the iPhone to give you a bit of a better view, hopefully. Uh, might be able to come out a little bit wider there. There we are. Okay, so um, what I really like about it, first of all, I think they've given a bit less room for the car and made the map a bit bigger, which I do prefer. Um, but anyway, I, I really like this bottom part. This is really where the major change has come. Uh, you used to be able to have like loads of icons along there, some of which you never ever used, others which you did use. Now you get to customize those. So hitting that button there brings up all the apps that you can select and you can select whichever one you want to bring into this bar. You can have four along here at the moment. I would imagine they'll expand that. On this side of that little line there is ones that you've used recently, so you can quickly access those as well. But you can sort of just touch them, hold them, and drag and drop these into place. So what have I got along my bottom row, which are the ones I use all the time? Um, I've got the radio, which I do use a lot. I've also got Spotify, which is my other um, music choice. I've got the media players, you know, so Netflix and theatre rather, so Netflix, etc. And this is really good. This is one example where we used to have to uh, press two buttons, but now you can just press one button. And that is for the uh, travel grid, you know. Um, you can't, I haven't started the trip yet, but, you know, where you get the graph up showing how you're doing on the, on the actual trip itself. So for me, that's better. A couple of quick little tips, though. Um, just for those people who, you know, if you do need to access something that's not along here, it's just one press there, and then you can access all of these, the phone or whatever, um, toy box or whatever, straight off that menu there. So that's pretty straightforward. And then people were saying, you know, oh, about the heating system, you've got to bring out to put the heated rear windows on. Well, nine times out of 10, I put the heated rear windows on from my app anyway, but there is quite a good thing. If you go, if you go down by here and you just hit the sort of temperature adjustment, um, you'll you'll get a little pop-up window and then you can adjust the heated seat from there or you can switch on the um, the sort of heated front and back screen so that's pretty good uh, you've also got settings there as well one of the things that I used to use a lot which is no longer on the bottom menu is the heated seats but I've got to say since the update I now use auto heat heated seats and you never got to worry about it so you never got to touch it at all um, so in the menu itself it's a lot different it's a lot cleaner it's really well laid out um, you know you do need to one of the I guess one of the things on the bottom that would have been nice was the sort of or along the top actually was the sort of um, sentry buttons that was I was quite handy but you've got to come into here to look at those now so it's not too too much of an issue and on controls you've got all the major ones there uh, and then you've got your normal sort of 
pedals and charging. Um, that's slightly different, I think that's a different image now. So they've pretty much revamped the whole thing. Weirdly, they've kept the percentage thing greyed out as it has been, which is a bit weird because you've got colour down here and then you've got sort of black and grey up there. But there we are. Um, uh, uh, autopilot, uh, I don't think there's many. Oh, there is one change there. You've now also got automatic blind spot cameras in the new update. Um, which allows you to have the, when you indicate, a, a little shot of the uh, camera comes up here to see a blind spot. I did have that on when it first came out, but I must admit, I switched it off now. It got a bit, especially in the evening, it just, you couldn't really see much and it was quite a distraction I found, so I've, I've turned that off. Um, and then I'm not going to go through all of those now anyway, but you'll, you know, you can pretty much see. One of the other things that they've done in a recent update is change navigation. So I'm going to talk you through the navigation and, and how that works. Um, so I'm actually going home now. So um, a very quick tip is just simply to swipe to the right wherever you are. And that will just put in now turn your right home as a destination. So you can see um, if we leave now, well, I'm actually going to stop at Hilton Park UK southbound, which I've never been to before. Um, uh, what time are we going to get home? Let's have a look. Uh, should be home at five o'clock, which would be perfect to pick my wife up from work. That'll be awesome. So we're going to go to Hilton Park southbound. Uh, and have 20% left in the battery then and then top up there for 20 minutes and then back home with 18% so that's pretty straightforward. Um, you can now add waypoints so if you tap that third point there you can add a stop which is again how, why this wasn't always on there I don't know but you could add a stop so if there's somewhere we wanted to go now you could add that and it would be a waypoint for you to add on the journey or you could set it to return back here so you can actually then sort of type in a return journey, really. So um, that, that works really well. That's a, a big improvement. Uh, so there we are. So I think that's pretty much it as far as uh, the navigation goes. OK, so we're, uh, we've just joined the M6 and um, we're heading home. We've got, well, we've got 49 minutes till we get to the Tesla superchargers at the Hilton Park. And that's the only stop we've got to make. We're there just for a few minutes and then we'll be back in South Wales. Um, but I thought, whilst I'm on the motorway here, I thought I'd run through Autopilot again. It was a very popular video. I did a full review of Autopilot, a full tutorial, which is still relevant, but now the user interface has changed, I thought it'd be worthy of doing an update uh, on that. Um, on that video. So while we're on this journey home, let's have a quick look at autopilot and how it works. I've got to say first as a sort of precursor to that, I use autopilot an awful lot. Um, on a journey like today, um, normally I would have autopilot on, certainly on all the dual carriageways and all the motorways. Um, and pretty much on motorways, I would say 95% of the time the car is on autopilot. Um, on the screen, I'll put a blue border on the screen when autopilot is activated so you can see clearly uh, when we've got it engaged and when we haven't but just a little look at the screen will show you that um, the interface has changed slightly but really from a font point of view nothing more than that um, so you've got the sort of speed limit there in the in the red circled one um, and then the maximum automatically the car will set the maximum speed uh, to the speed limit um, and then on the other side, you've got my current speed and I'm driving manually at the moment. So to engage autopilot, it's just two little taps on the right hand stalk um, and they don't have to be full taps all the way down. They can be just intermittent taps, like the same as you do on this side when you just want three indicator flashes. So two little taps down and then the car is now taken over completely. Um, you can see that's the case because the little uh, autopilot symbol steering wheel is in blue. And also, um, we've got these two blue lines as well. And the car will now hold me in this position in between these lines. It'll look at the speed um, and uh, it'll basically take care of everything, really. You do have to touch the wheel every 45 seconds or so just to let the car know that you're there. Or by simply resting your hand on the, on the wheel like this, um, that's enough to indicate to the car that you're in control. 
um, and it's still very relaxing because you're not actually doing the steering you're just your hand is, is moving with the wheel obviously but it's the car that's actually doing the steering itself but very often I take my hands off uh, always close to the wheel though and always keeping an eye on the road this car's pulling out now so the car will automatically spot that and you can see on the screen the car in front is a darker gray than other cars and that's because the autopilot system is tracking that car uh, keeping a closer eye on it um, obviously as, uh, as as other cars come close there's one coming to me now on the right you'll see that change color to a darker area as it starts to to track that there we go and uh, so it's now tracking that car as well um, so yeah so as I say it does make what what is the benefit of autopilot well today is a good example I've driven from Abergavenny up to Manchester and I'm on the way back now so when I get home this evening at five I'll have been driving since well virtually since half past eight so I've had a long day behind the wheel but I, I, you don't feel tired because a lot of the stress and strain of motorway driving particularly is taken care of by the car you don't tend to feel as fatigued driving um, and also the one other beauty about electric cars and I'll come on to um, you know what I love about this car after having two years ownership here's a great example the traffic in front now is slowing down you know normally that sort of stop go traffic is quite difficult to deal with but because the car is keeping an eye out all the time you do sort of you know you're always obviously attentive and I was ready to take over if I needed to but I've never known the car falter on the sort of slowing down with traffic ahead and on autopilot you can actually set the distance with the right hand mouse wheel you can move it right and left to decide how many car lengths from the car in front you want to be so if I move it you'll see that the moment that was moved it to five I've normally got it on four which I find is uh, is plenty and so now the car will keep four car lengths it's not actually physically four car lengths it actually depends on how fast you go in but it'll keep that as the distance between me and the car in front and as the car in front moves off my car accelerates and again I've not touched anything since we put autopilot on so I think the benefits of autopilot are quite clear if you've got a Tesla and you don't use autopilot hopefully you'll find this little section of this video useful I'd also recommend that you look at my full review for autopilot and um, the card for that is above um, you know because I know there will be people out there with Teslas who perhaps are a bit worried about autopilot a bit scared about it um, and you do initially you know it takes a bit of getting used to but once you are used to it it really does make a huge difference uh, as far as um, it really does make a huge difference as far as the pleasure that you get from driving the car so this car's pulling in front of me now the car will automatically adjust drops the speed a little bit and it'll let the car get to the distance that I've set um, and then carry on so very intuitive very clever the way it all works you know you now and again you get little hiccups now and again you get a thing called phantom braking um, I've not had it for a while um, and usually if you do get it it can be sometimes when you go under flyovers sometimes when you're going past big articulated lorries um, for some reason the autopilot thinks the lorry's moving into your lane a little bit and it will react to that and slow you down quite quite aggressively on occasion um, but it used to be with the earlier softwares that it was just randomly you'd be on an empty dual carriageway and all of a sudden the car would slam its brakes on um, I certainly haven't experienced that for an awful long time and I do use autopilot on motorways an awful lot uh, as you can see we've been on this now I don't know how long the video has been this section is probably 10 minutes long and I've not come off autopilot at all so okay I wanted to touch on a few of the things that I like about this Tesla I've, I've had this car now bought it new um, and bought it in 2020 March so it's coming up to two years uh, I'd never had a new car before I'd never had an electric car before so it's been quite an eye-opener for me and now after two years of ownership I can honestly say hand on heart it's the best car that I've ever owned by a long way um, I can't ever see myself moving away from electric cars um, I'm not 100% sold on Teslas 
you know, I often see other cars, other electric cars, and lots of manufacturers now bring them out. But I often see, you know, like the ID3, I really like the look of that. It was one of the services just a little while ago. So I do like the look of that. Um, that being said, there's an awful lot about Tesla that I love and an awful lot about this car that I love. Firstly, the driving experience. And there's quite a few elements to that. Um, but the driving experience of this car is phenomenal. Um, you know, I've driven to Manchester and back in a day today to pick up some equipment. I could have got it couriered down. Uh, uh, I wouldn't want to because it's quite delicate equipment, but um, you know, given the opportunity to jump in the car and drive all day, um, I tend to like to take those opportunities. I do really enjoy driving this car. Um, and I've never had a car where I felt like that before. I've never had a car where I can you know, come up with excuses to get in it and drive it. So, and the driving experience is the reason for that. First of all, there's one pedal driving, and for those of you who have not driven an electric car, I would recommend test drive it. Test drive a Tesla, um, and, or any other electric car actually, and most of them have regenerative braking, and that means that you, you drive really with just one pedal. So you press the pedal to accelerate, and as you take your foot off the pedal, the car starts to slow down against the sort of the reverse energy of the electric motor, if you like, and that actually does put energy back into the battery. Um, and you get used to it very quickly, and you wonder why all cars... I mean, I've driven this now for t nearly two years, and the other week I took my wife's car out, uh, and it, honestly, it felt like going back in time. It felt like... It felt antiquated, it felt clunky, it felt old in comparison to, to this, where driving is an absolute pleasure. So normally, I'm obviously on autopilot now, but normally one pedal driving, uh, it takes about five minutes to get used to, and then once you've done it, you just never want to go back to anything else. The other thing I love about the car is the acceleration. The 0-60 to in this car is 5.4, which is the slowest one of the three Model 3s. Uh, the dual motor, I think, is 4.3, and then the uh, performance model is either 3.2 or 2.9. 3.2. Uh, it is quick. Even this one is quick. Um, you put your foot down, you've got instant torque, but the speed isn't just, the acceleration and the thrill of that isn't just from a standing start to 60, which, which is very quick. It's also now, you know, even if I came off autopilot now and um, wanted to accelerate up to 90 or whatever to overtake something, then the acceleration in this is still quick, even at that end. Certainly the sort of 30 to 50 is, is really fast. And the pickup, because it's instant torque, is incredible. So that's got to be part of the driving experience. Also, um, the UI and the ability to have new features um, is, is a really nice thing to have in a car. Um, the software probably gets updated, on average, I'd probably say every six weeks, but sometimes much more than that if there's bug fixes. But it's a very easy thing to do. You get notified on the app that the software update's required, and you hit update, and the car just does it. So it's very, very easy to do. Um, I like the style of the car as well. I like the look of it. I'm not overly sold on the look directly to the front of the car, um, but certainly from the side angle and the back wings, I love the look of those. I think it's a, it's a very distinctive shape. It does turn a lot of heads, that's for sure. Um, particularly children. Children love these cars. It must be like TR7 was to me when I was a kid. You know, the car you always wanted to look at. And so whenever you're driving, kids love to point at it. And I've even had one kid once, um, went past this bike, came back, and the, the sentry mode recorded him, and he had to touch the car. So he gently just touched the back wing and was, uh, was thrilled to have touched a Tesla. So there is definitely that element to it as well. Um, I also, really do enjoy the fact that it's a lot cheaper to run, significantly cheaper to run. My wife's Mini, I realised the other day, she's paying £30 a month um, tax on that car. Well, 
I don't even spend £30 a month in running costs for this car. Um, there's no tax to pay. Obviously, there's allowances to buy EVs still, not as generous as they were when I bought this, but they are still available. Um, no servicing. You know, I've changed the wipers on here. That's the only thing I've done. And I'm due for new tyres uh, fairly soon. But other than that, I've had to spend out no money whatsoever on this car. Um, so there's a huge saving there. I don't know how much it is, but it's a huge saving. My fuel consumption, I haven't got the exact figures or anything, but I know I used to spend 100, 115 pounds a month on my diesel Audi. And I'm, I'd be surprised if I now spend um, 15 pounds a month. Uh, I charge up at home, and because I'm on the uh, Octopus tariff, I get my electricity even now with the hike in prices, because I've just renewed the contract. Between half past midnight and half past four, I'm paying five pence a kilowatt. So I think last night I went from 30% to 100% because of this journey. And I think it was just shy of two pounds or something. I mean, it's, it's ridiculously low. I'm also very lucky, thanks to you, my uh, loyal viewers, um, that I uh, I don't pay for supercharger miles. I've had, um, I think, 11 in total. Very kind subscribers who've used my code to buy their Teslas, and I, I have received a 1,000 free supercharger miles uh, because of that. So uh, certainly up until the end of next year I'm not going to be paying for any supercharger uh, miles uh, so a journey like today has cost me hardly anything to go to Manchester and back apart from wear and tear on the car as far as things I change after all there's, there's no such thing as a perfect car um, I, I do struggle though to find things that I would change I would probably say and you'd probably be able to hear it the road noise in this car is quite high um, and that might be because you've got no engine trying to block it out but I think also you know there's a lot of glass um, and you know I think Tesla have refined it refined it a little bit apparently some of the newer models are triple glazed and um, you know haven't got as much tire noise in the cabin in this car it, it is quite loud so I would probably you know if I could have some changes made it would be improvements still further on that would be good and also I'm, I'm six foot three and so I'm a big chap and getting in and out these doors um, I usually sort of rub my head on here as I'm getting in and out so it's a little bit uncomfortable to sort of bend in to get in here but that's because I'm six foot three uh, the Model Y which I've not test driven yet is I know would it resolve that issue it's a much higher seat in position and the vehicle's much higher as well so I'm sure when I try one of those um, it'll be a nice uh, it'll be a nice in and out uh, sort of uh, it'll be a, a big improvement on that that particular issue and I've got to say other than that I struggle to find anything wrong with this car uh, I know there's things about paint and yeah, all right, the paint's not perfect, but I don't think any car's got perfect paint anyway. Um, and so I've never really had, you know, there was a couple of little things I took it back for just after I had it. But I just made a list, dropped it back into Tesla and they sorted out. In fact, some of the things, there was a headlight issue, they came out and replaced it. So I've never had an issue with servicing. Um, I've just found out I'm going to get a recall for the cable that's going to the back camera. But I know they'll sort that out very smoothly and it, it won't be any hassle at all. So I definitely would strongly recommend if you've not driven an electric car yet, go and drive a few, but make sure one of them is a Tesla. Have a go in a Tesla. I think it's it's got to be one of the best electric vehicles in the world uh, right now. Um, but definitely do that. And as I say, I can't really think of many downsides to the car. There's a lot of positives. One of the other things that people do sometimes talk about, like funny enough, on the way up I was stopped at Kiel Services and a guy came up and started chatting to me as I was charging up and he was saying about range and everything and it's always the one that people bring up. 
But I must admit, with nearly two years' experience in the car now, I've never had an issue with range, anxiety, um, apart from once, but that was mostly my fault. Um, but I've never had an issue with it. There's keel services, there's some chargers in there. You do just need to um, plan your journey a little bit better than perhaps you would normally. Um, so you need to, you know, have a little look if you're going on a long journey like today where you're going to stop. I mean, the car does it for you anyway, but I always just preempt that by having a little look. Uh, you know, I've been off, we've been off for a, you know, a few days down to Devon and up to York, and I really like the experience of driving an electric car and a Tesla. I quite like the experience of, you know, putting the planning into the journey, uh, but I've never had an issue as far as, you know, you know, this morning when I left Abergavenny, here's a good example. This morning when I left Abergavenny, um, the first stop was Kiel, which we've just gone past, but on the other way up, obviously, the northbound. Um, and that was two hours and 30 minutes from my house. So, you know, I need a break after two hours and 30 minutes of driving. Everybody does, in my view. And so one of the things that EV driving does, it does sort of force you into that discipline of taking breaks and that's really important um, uh, my bladder range is definitely less than the battery range of this car so here we are on the m6 we're going to pull over in a moment and charge up and i've been on autopilot for the entire trip bar a few a few occasions maybe where we've been changing motorways or something other than that the car has done all of the driving so in a mile we're getting off and we're gonna go to the supercharger I've not been to this one actually it's the supercharger at Hilton Park uh, southbound uh, heading towards Birmingham uh, from up north and so um, I'm gonna show you the supercharging system how it works how easy in a Tesla it is to charge a car um, and also give you a, a tip on which charging station to pick so let's do that I'm going to come off autopilot now which is just a simple move up of the right hand stalk and then uh, indicate to get in the uh, services Oh, interestingly on the sat nav you can see I don't know if you can see it there's 11 available stalls it shows you there how many stores are available and gives you a sort of direction right the way to it in 500 feet your destination will be on the left so it looks like they're just around here somewhere oh there they are I can see them Go down now there. your destination is on the left. I think I have to slip in this way here. Oh, nice. Nice little segregated area with a few picnic benches. And there's plenty of chargers here. So let's go into 1A, shall we? Don't think there's any... Uh, I think they're all version 2s. So okay, here we are at the supercharger station, and the first thing to notice, well, firstly, there's only myself and one other Tesla here, and there's probably, crikey, there's probably 15 or 20 chargers. One of the things to look out for, though, is that you'll see there's numbers at the bottom of each of the charge stations, uh, and there's always a sort of number 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B, and the idea behind that is that uh, each pair of chargers shares the same power connection. So as you approach the charge stations, if you can avoid parking next to somebody else, that's the proper etiquette to do, um, because it means that you're not going to reduce the charging speed that they're 
currently having by pinching half of the charge from them. So, you know, if there is a space, make sure that you get into one of the two available for that number. So, you know, if you were coming into three, if three A and three B are free, jump into one of those. Um, but, you know, if somebody's on four A, four A, don't jump into four B unless it's the only space that's left. Uh, particularly here, there's just me and one other. So they're right the way down here, I'm right the way down here. And we'll have a look at uh, how easy it is to, um, to charge the car. I'm just gonna use the iPhone to record this bit. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just show you how easy it is to charge a Tesla. Once you've got your microphone sorted out, that is. Leave it in the bloody car, hold on, hold on. Okay. So let's just show you how easy it is to charge a Tesla. You'll see there's two actual uh, handles there, if you like, ones. Uh, the one for the Model 3 is this top one here. It's indicated by that symbol there. And you just simply take that out. And then on this wand itself, you'll see there's a button. A lot of people don't know this, but you don't have to open the flap from inside the car. You just simply press this button and the flap opens pop it in and then you'll see the indicator will go dark blue saying it's communicating with the car and then in a second it'll go green hopefully there we go so that means the charge is starting and if we go back into the car So we'll get back into the car and on the new interface now um, you'll see that all the information about charging is across the top there um, it does show you on this side that uh, actually I can reduce that let me just uh, get that down to 90% you can see already that's gone to 22% it was 20 when we started literally a few seconds ago and you can see here that the car is charging at 144 kilowatts. It's already added a kilowatt in a couple of seconds. Um, and it's doing 660 miles an hour. So it's gonna be 20 minutes to charge up to be able to continue the trip, basically. Uh, so it's a quick stop. I'm gonna jump in and just use the loo. I'm gonna turn the cameras off as well now, but that's how easy it is to charge the Tesla. Now, I'm very lucky that I get the supercharger miles for free because of my very kind subscribers to my channel who used my code it's no longer available anymore boohoo elon um but yeah so i'm lucky i don't pay for these but even if you were it's i think 24 pence a kilowatt or something like that so it's not a huge amount it's still about a third i think of the cost of fuel normal petrol or diesel um but for me you know it's i don't have to pay for it but even if it was paying for it it's so easy you set up your account on tesla and you don't even have to worry about you know it just you plug a car in it knows what car it is and it just charges it to your account it couldn't could not be simpler um at all so there we are so hopefully that's given you a bit of insight how to charge your tesla it's a very very easy process um and obviously there are third party chargers now and the process is getting better on those as well but I'd say Tesla is still a little bit ahead of the rest of the competition as far as ease of use. So there we are. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, as I say, please do like and subscribe. It'd be great to get the viewing figures over a thousand. That would be a great target to hit a thousand subscribers. So I'd be, I would be chuffed to beans. So the more you can share my videos, the quicker we'll get there. And that'll be awesome. Um, thank you very much indeed. And as always, I will catch you next time.